In today's video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to install this easy generator switch on any 110 volt appliance. The beauty of this product is that majority of homes do not have a way to get power to these critical appliances in the event of an emergency power outage, whether that be your fridge, a sump pump, your freezer, your gas furnace, things that are critical in the event of a power outage. Now we're gonna be installing this on a gas furnace, which again is a critical appliance that you need to keep your home warm, to keep your pipes from freezing in the event of an emergency. Now we showed this product about this time last year, but I wanted to create another video with more simplicity and clarity to make sure that you know exactly how to wire this in. I feel like any homeowner can do this and do it safely, but please don't attempt to do this if you don't have any knowledge when it comes to the hazards of electricity. Okay, so if you go down to your gas furnace, this is probably what you will find. It is a simple light switch. Now, the problem again is that there's no way to get power to this device in the event of an emergency. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to turn the breaker off to our furnace. We're gonna just verify that the power is dead here. And then we're going to disconnect this switch and show you what we have underneath the switch. Okay, so now that we have the switch removed here, we have the breaker turned off. We're just going to verify by going over these power leads and making sure that there is no juice going to this. So what we can do is just verify that this hot pen is indeed working. And then we'll come back over here and make sure that this is completely dead. Okay, so now that we know this is completely dead, we're just gonna show you what the inside of this looks like. So this is your main hot wire coming out from the grid power from your breaker panel. And this is the hot wire going in to power your furnace. And then of course we have our neutral tied together here. And then we have our ground on the bottom of the switch here. So we're going to remove all of this and show you what we have once this is removed. Alternatively, you might have something like this that has a fuse, but the same thing is going to apply. We're gonna kill power, just remove this altogether. And this is what you will find. So these are our power wires going to the furnace itself. And these are the wires coming from our breaker panel. Okay, so this is what's gonna be included in the easy generator switch box. So we have the box itself, and then we have the device and the ground wire comes pre-attached on here. So these are kind of connected, but you can pull it out to give yourself some length. We have the installation instructions here. And then we also have this guy. Now you can do this a couple of ways. You can remove this box altogether. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to install this guy just like this, and that's kind of how it's going to sit. So we can avoid having to remove this box and this um, cable for our grid power. So all we did here was knock this with a flathead screwdriver, and then we're just gonna kind of bend it back and forth here. All right, and then once we did that, we just put our box in and put the nut up there. I went ahead and threw a couple of self-tappers just to make sure that nothing moves here, um, but this is gonna be super easy now. And then what we'll do is we'll just put a cap here, but again, alternatively, if you wanted to just bust this out and mount it right here, you could totally do that. All right, so this is what we got so far, and we have our easy generator switch here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna put that ground back where it was. And that way this will just kind of hang and we can do the rest of the wiring here. Okay, so we have four sets of instructions here. This is for a bonded neutral at the panel, which is not what we're doing. We are gonna do the bonded neutral at the equipment. Now the other set of instructions have a floating neutral at the equipment and floating neutral at the panel. But this is the one that we're gonna use here. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the line white. So this is our line neutral. That's gonna correspond with the line neutral here. So we're gonna feed this up through. Just make sure we have enough length here and we're gonna cut it right there and we're gonna wire nut these together. Now what you wanna do with these stranded wires is you wanna make sure they're a little bit farther out than the solid wire when you get this wire nut started. And that way that'll make sure that this nut grabs both of these and not just the solid wire. And you can tell if it's grabbing really good and spinning these wires together, 
That's exactly what you want. Okay, so that one is finished. We're just gonna tuck it back in there. This one, the little tag fell off, but it said load neutral. So this one we're gonna feed up through that same little chase there. And we're going to hook this one up to the load neutral, which is the furnace is the load. So this is gonna be the, the neutral that goes into the furnace. So we're just gonna trim this back and connect those. Okay, so next we're gonna do our red wire. So we're gonna feed this up through and the red wire is going to go to our main power source from the grid right here. So we're just gonna take a wire nut and connect those two. Tuck that in there. And last but not least, the black wire, we're gonna go up and that's going to attach to our load. So that's gonna to go to the black furnace wire here. Good and snug. And last but not least, we're just gonna do our grounds here. I just have a big red wire nut, so I'm gonna use that guy. So we can go ahead and put our cap on this guy and then permanently mount our easy generator switch. Or as Kevin would say, the easy generator switch. Cause he's from New Jersey. Well, Philadelphia, somewhere over there. There we go. And there you have it. This is fully finished. We're gonna go ahead and turn the breaker on and then we'll put this in normal mode and see what we got. Okay, so we've got our breaker turned back on. We're going to flip this to the normal position. Open this up and show you what we've got here. As you can see, we've got flashing lights. This is flashing once and then another two to indicate that the blower will run for 90 seconds and then it'll start the ignition process. All right, so our blower just turned off, inducer came on. So we have essentially started the ignition process here. Next thing that'll happen is our igniter will come on everything is working like it should again I don't have gas set up to this so it's obviously not going to ignite so we're gonna turn this back off and now we have our extension cord from our power station and we're simply going to plug it in right here and then we're gonna put it over to the generator selector now as you can see same thing got the same flashing blower motor comes on and then again, we'll fast forward about 90 seconds to show you that it starts um, the ignition process. All right, our inducer just came on. Next thing that comes on is our igniter and everything is running off of our solar um, or our power station here. We can recharge this with solar and this is all running on generator power. Totally isolating um, everything from the grid power so it's not going to back feed and injure someone. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. So something that a lot of people ask me, and that is if I'm running on a backup generator or a power station, will my thermostat function the same as it normally does? And the answer is yes. You don't have to do anything additional. The furnace is going to give power to your thermostat no matter if it's a smart thermostat or a battery powered thermostat, this will still control your furnace if you have it plugged into a power station. Well guys, it is as easy as that to install this easy generator switch. The name does not lie. It's a very nice product to have on any gas furnace as well as other appliances so that you can be prepared in the event of an emergency. Now, if you wanna find this product, simply go down to the video description and you can find this product there. Now, if you're interested in seeing a couple of other methods of getting power to your gas furnace and to other items in your home, check out this video right here and I'm sure you'll find that one informative as well. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.